Well, I'm alive. Hi. Welcome back to Educating Jeremy. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from eating disorder. Hi, Shani. Hi. Welcome back to my channel um, that I haven't been on here for a while. It's been a little while. Um, as you can tell from the title of this video, I uh, was going to... My pharmacy is calling. Hold on. Um, I want to fill you guys in on what's been going on health-wise, physical health-wise. Um, and I've been trying... I've tried making this video like... I'm not kidding, probably at least eight times, and every time I do, I get a panic attack. So this, um, these experiences were a lot more traumatic than I thought that, that they would be. Um, I, but I feel like it's been a while now, and, I'm, and I might as well try again because I have makeup on. We just got back from a baptism, and I have makeup on, and Danny had to go to work, so. I'm like, maybe I'll try again. So we'll see how this goes, okay? All right, before I get into this video, I need to put like a big trigger warning of like TMI, big time. You're gonna be hearing about digestion things and things coming out of me that are not fun and all that kind of stuff. So if that's something you don't wanna hear about, I completely understand. But for those of you that do want to hear what happened, keep watching, but you've been warned. So don't tell me in the comments, don't leave, don't send messages, don't go saying how gross I am and how inappropriate that was. You've been warned, but if it were me and someone I watched had gone, I would wanna know all the details because I'm, like, I'm a very morbidly curious person. Like I need to know, I need to know everything. So anyway, so that's your warning and let's get into it. Um, this is gonna be a two-parter. So the first part, I'm gonna tell you what happened first because, oh, by the way, I almost died twice. I know that um, I've been very sick forever and everyone knows that and blah, 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 and I felt in the past like I'm dying and stuff, but no, this time like I literally almost died twice, like this close to death, twice a week apart from each other for different reasons. First reason was I caught an infection called C. diff and that's what we're gonna talk about today. The second reason is I had a heart attack and we're gonna talk about that in the next video. So where do we begin? Um, and remember, this was a while ago, so this is back in May, beginning of May, I think. Um, so the whole month of April, I had been having a lot of like weird um, diarrhea and uh, throwing up and just like feeling really sick, like for no reason at all. I didn't have a fever. I didn't have anything. I just was feeling really weird and sick. And so like, I actually thought I was pregnant, to be honest at the time, I'm not, don't worry. Um, but, um, so I kind of had to be on bed rest. I was really, really, really sick and I just thought it would pass and it didn't for like a whole month. I just got so sick and um, I lost a lot of weight during that time and it was really bad. And then one day, um, and it was, it would have been what, the day before Mother's Day, I believe. Um, I was lying in my bed and my chest started to hurt really bad, and so did my stomach. And so I called Danny, he came up here, and um, I love that there's a vacuum in the back of my, and like Christmas wrapping paper and a Christmas tree behind me, I love that. Um, <laughs> Danny came up here and I told him I thought I was having a heart attack, that's what I thought was happening, and that something felt off, and my diarrhea and throwing up was getting a lot more frequent that day. I told him he needed to call 911 because I couldn't move. My whole body was like shaking profusely. And if I even like opened my eyes, I would pass out in and out. Um, it was really, really bad. And like, he couldn't carry me down the stairs. And I told him, I'm like, just call the ambulance. And then I passed out again. And I guess he called them and they came. Um, and they came in my room and they did an EKG and the EKG was fine, which was good. Um, but then they were like, yeah, you're not looking so good. The other vitals and other things are your temperature and other things are not looking good. You should probably go to the ER. So we go to the ER and they kind of fought, they, ex they escorted us there. I didn't ride in the ambulance yet at that point because, um, they're like, it's really expensive and you're not having a heart attack. So it's not like you might die any second. So why don't we just like escort you? So we get to the ER. They kept me there for a few hours. They gave me some fluids and nausea meds and diarrhea meds and all that. But during that time that we were there, that's when everything escalated really bad. Um, I was having diarrhea and throwing up probably 
once every 45 minutes maybe um and or twice maybe maybe two one or two times every 45 minutes something like that um and it was a lot though, but like it was a lot, a lot. And then I started seeing blood in my feces. You're welcome. And I really should have put a TMI warning on this. Maybe I'll go back and do that at the beginning. Anyway, I remember that the doctor was a complete douchebag. Um, he came in, asked me what was going on. And I was trying to explain to him how I had been feeling for the past month and all that. And while I was like telling him, he like fell asleep. <laughs> So I'm like, do you want me to keep going or do I just keep talking? Cause your eyes are closer. Do I keep talking? What's happening? Um, and then he's like, okay, well, let's get you some meds and some fluids and check you out. I'm like, great. Thank you, sir. So again, they gave me the meds and fluids. Um, the diarrhea and, and throwing up got even worse. And I was in that bathroom and the, this is so TMI, but like, this is how I knew something was like really wrong. This is really TMI, guys. This is really TMI. The smell of my shit was horrific. It smelled like, if you were to imagine, if like a dead person were able to poop and they'd been dead for at least a couple months and then their dead body let out some poop, that's what it smelled like. It smelled like death poop. So anyway, um, so then the nurse comes back in finally. They weren't really attentive very well. And the nurse came back in and he was kind of a douchebag too, to be honest. If you're watching, hi, you're not, because I didn't tell you about my channel. Never mind. Other nurses I did. Hi, other nurses, if you're watching. Um, anyway, uh, he was being a jerk the whole night too. And um, he came back in and I was on the toilet while this was happening, but I could hear him talking to Danny because I had like my own bathroom in the emergency room. And I could hear him talking to Danny and he's like, yeah, the, the doctor says you have colitis and you can go home. And Danny's like, that's it. She has colitis and she can go home. And he's like, yeah. Danny's like, well, where's the doctor? And he's like, uh, uh, he's busy. And so then I come out of the bathroom and I'm like, where's the doctor? And he's like, well, he's not here. And he said just to send you home. And I'm like, okay, what does he want me to do? Like, he never came back in. That was the last time I saw him when he fell asleep on me. That very first time he saw me, and then he fell asleep. And then, then I never saw him again at all. And um, so I was like, okay, so what does he want me to do? Uh, you just need to go home and rest. And I'm like, well, I know that colitis is kind of bad. So um, I've had many family members that have had it. So I know that's kind of bad. So like, what else can I do? Uh, just go home and rest. You'll be fine. And I was like, okay. And then my gut started telling me something was like really wrong. And I said, sir, um, to the nurse, I said, I, I don't think I should go home. And he's like, well, the doctor said to send you home. And I said, I have a really weird feeling that something else is wrong, like really wrong. And he was like, well, doctor told you to go home. And we argued about it for probably 10 minutes. I'm not even kidding. And finally I just gave up and I was like, fine, we'll just go home. So we go home, very unprofessional by the way, and very, um, I don't know if it's illegal, but it's very, it might be, I don't know, but like it felt illegal that the doctor didn't even come in to talk to me, didn't give me any like, um, he didn't talk to me about what I can do and what medications could help or anything like that. Nothing at all. They were so rude to me. So we go back home and about 10 minutes after we got home, I collapsed again. Um, really bad. Like I was gone. Um, and I woke up and um, the EMTs were here again. Danny had called 911 and they were here again. They checked my heart again. I was, my heart was okay. Um, but while they were here, I ran over to Danny's bathroom back there. They were all right here actually. And I ran back to Danny's bathroom and, um, and I started like diarrhea and throw up at the same time and both had blood in it. So the throw up had a bunch of blood. So I was like on the toilet, so much diarrhea coming out and then also like puking to the side into the tub. And they were like, okay, something's wrong. We got to get her to the hospital. So they took me in the ambulance to the hospital. I remember in the ambulance, <laughs> the guy that was sitting back there with me, he was like, you kind of look like shit. And I'm like, I know, I feel like shit. And he's like, and I said, sir, will you do me a favor? And he's like, yeah. He's like, and I was like, well, we were in, as you know, oh, by the way, it was the same, it was the same EMTs as before, by the way, they came back and they're like, hey, good to see you again. And we had told them what happened. And then they witnessed 
how bad it was and they were like, okay, let's go. So in the ambulance, I was like, do you mind pulling the doctor aside at the emergency room and telling him to take it seriously because something is wrong. Something is clearly wrong. He's like, yeah, I got you, babe, I got you. So we get there and, and he did. He went up to the doctor. Luckily it wasn't the same doctor, we got a different doctor, but he still went up to the doctor and he was like, you need to take care of this girl. Something is wrong with her. Um, so anyway, and also when I got to the ER, the guys that like opened the back of the truck to let me out also looked at me and they're like, you look like shit, you look like death. And I'm like, I know my lips were blue at that point. Like I wasn't breathing very well and I was just so sick and just so much blood and it was bad. So, um, so they admitted me to the ER and they kept me there actually for, I think maybe an hour. They ran some tests on me. Um, gave me some more fluids and but I think within that hour there was like two or three times I had gone to the had to go to the toilet and was like barfing into a, the bag that they give you and also shitting at the same time and it was really bad right so they came back and they're like uh we need to admit you to the hospital and I was like okay and they're like yeah you're actually gonna go to the ICU and I'm like why and they're like well you have something called C. diff which is like an infection of the bowels, I believe. It's really, really bad. It can be fatal um, because you can go septic and die from it. Um, and my symptoms kept getting worse, so they hurried and rushed me to the ICU. Uh, I it was It's such a blur now, but there were so many people just surrounding me and doing all these tests on me, and all of them had to put on these like special suits and masks and gloves and, and told us that I wasn't allowed to leave the room and if Danny left the room like he had to wash his hands with soap every time he came or left from the room um because sanitizer doesn't kill that kind of germ by the way and it's extremely contagious um and it's a lot of people die from this um it's really scary and my vitals were dropping and I was um getting close to death and and they were all kind of not freaking out like they're professionals and they were keeping their cool. Luckily, they were all super sweet to me and super like talking to me and reassuring me that everything was going to be okay, but that this was not going to be fun and that this was going to be hard. Um, so they ended up keeping me in the ICU for four days. Uh, Mother's Day was the day I think that I was admitted like early on early, like in the middle of the night of the beginning of Mother's Day. So I remember calling my mom and being like, happy Mother's Day, I can't come see you today. I'm sort of dying. <laughs> She's like, well, we're gonna come see you. And I'm like, no, don't do not do that. Please don't do that, da da da. But she still did, of course, cause that's my mama. But they had to wear the whole suits and gloves and everything too. Anyway, um, so during that four days, um, it, it that first night, especially it had escalated really bad. Like it had gotten to, um, a point where I was for the next four days straight with no rest in between. I'm not even joking with, I never was able to sleep longer than 30, 45 minutes at the most because every 10 to 30 minutes or 10 to 45 minutes, but usually it was closer to 10 to 20-ish minutes. So like every 20-ish minutes, I had to get up and run to my toilet that was in the room with me. And it sucks because you can't flush. They have to check your poop every single time you poop. And so that room stunk like hell, like it was so gross. And, but that's why they keep you quarantined in there. And that's why people have to mask up and all that. And I get that. And I'm grateful that they did do that because I wouldn't want to like infect anybody else that's in the ICU. Cause if you're in the ICU, you're there for a, re a really bad reason. And so I didn't want to infect any other patients anyway. So I am glad that they um, were protecting them and everything. and and the nurses and doctors too. Every time they came in, once I learned what it was, I was like, uh. Um, anyway, uh, so something that I didn't know at the time, I didn't know until I got home from the ICU and I read my release papers, um, I had gone severely septic. And I don't know if they decided not to tell me because maybe it would stress me out too much or what, but like they didn't even tell my husband. They didn't even tell my parents came to visit me. They didn't even tell my parents. Um, I do kind of wish they would have at least told Danny or my mom or somebody. Um, like I understand that they were probably trying to protect me and just, um, you know, not stressing me out any more than I already was. Cause it's really, I mean, severe set, that's what happens right before you die. So like if, if you've ever known anybody that almost, almost died or did die from some sort of infection, that's like the last thing to happen right before you die. 
So it makes sense now looking back why they were all freaking out and why I had so many doctors coming in very often checking on me and they were coming in my room and bleaching my room every hour. It was crazy and and um, anyway, they had to like run certain tests every couple hours to make sure that I wasn't about to die because I guess that's, I mean, now looking back, I know that anyway, but at the time they just said that they were running tests to make sure that, you know, everything's okay. But now looking back, I know now that they were running tests to make sure that like my or my other organs weren't failing and stuff like that. So, and so I guess it is good that they didn't tell me, but I still wish they would have told Danny or my parents when they came to visit. I don't know, but either way, anyway, the mo it was the most miserable thing I've ever been through. I will tell you in the heart attack video, that is the worst pain I've ever had. But, um, but you know, that only lasted what, an hour maybe? But the only, the really bad pain when it was actually happening only lasted like maybe 15 minutes. Um, and so eventually it was able to go away, you know? Whereas with the C. diff, it was like, I was crapping and puking every 30 minute and it was painful every time and just blood was coming out everywhere and getting poked. And I had a billion IVs with blood and fluids and all the things going in back into me and then I would poop it right back out. It was like really miserable. I developed a really, really bad rash all over my body while I was in there. Um, and it was extremely itchy and painful. And um, so I just was miserable. And there was also a point where um, I had to get a feeding tube, but it wasn't a regular feeding tube. So they had to put the tube in my nose and down to my stomach. And that's, you know, essentially a feeding tube. However, they didn't uh, attach it to my stomach. They made it go through every inch of all of my bowels to get to the very bottom of my bowels, which was where the infection was. So the purpose of it was so that they could give me the antibiotic through the tube and have it go directly to where the infection was. So it wasn't a feeding tube, like they didn't put food in it or anything, but it was essentially the same thing. And that was not fun. Now I know how so many of you out there have told me that you've had to get feeding tubes put in. Um, and I'm so sorry you've had to go through that because holy crap, that was so painful and so uncomfortable. I don't even know how people get used to that. Like I was so uncomfortable the entire, it had to be in for, a day and I was so uncomfortable that day. I just, I feel so bad for those of you out there who have had to go through that. That's crazy. Anyway, so that was really painful and awful. But, um, and then also what happened was the fourth day I was there, no, the third night that I was there, um, I was talking to the nurse and I told her that I thought I might be going through menopause. And she kind of like, you know, checked me out and talked to me about it. And she's like, yeah, I think you are too. Um, and I wish she wouldn't have told me that. And by the way, I'm not, I've been to the doctor since then, my doctor since then and asked her and she said that there's a possibility I might be in pre-menopause, but that she's not worried about it right now. And she doesn't want me to worry about that right now. Um, and if anybody, if any of you don't know me, um, all I ever wanted was to be a mom. And I, uh, <sighs> um, have never been able to, right? And um, I have really severe like endometriosis that's really, really painful. So like every period and I would get periods like twice a month, sometimes three times a month. Um, and so it was, it, it, I still am not even there yet. Like I, I the, the worst day of my life is the day that they confirmed that I'm in menopause because even though I know I probably can't have kids because they've told me I can't have kids, but even though I know that somewhere in me, there's still that 0.001% chance that I can, you know? Um, and so if I'm going through menopause, that means there's absolutely no chance. And so I wasn't quite ready to deal with that. So when the nurse said that, and she was just trying to help, I don't blame her. Like I told her all my symptoms and I, and you know, she was just a couple years older than me. And so I kind of had a panic attack and I couldn't breathe very well. And it was the worst, night it was so bad because um just everything I was already so drained I was so sleep deprived because I hadn't slept in three days because I had to get up and poop every 10 to 30 minutes so that next morning I I told the nurse I was like can I please go home and finish recovering at home because this is something I cannot deal with in the hospital I need to be at home with my husband with my birds in my own bed in my home 
and away from everything. It's just too much. Like just everything came to a head. I just was miserable. And so on that fourth day after all of that, that I had been through and then finding about out that the nurse thought that I was going through menopause. But I begged her, I was like, I can't do this. I, I'm already at my wits end and I, and I gotta go home. So she went and talked to the doctor and was like, is there any way she could go re finish recovering at home? Because at this point I wasn't pooping. Um, I was, I wasn't done, but I, this was, you know, the fourth day and I was going maybe every, every couple hours maybe. So things were getting better and I was healing anyway. And, and I just told her I couldn't deal with all that on top of the mental stuff that comes with the menopause. And so, they did let me go home. They gave me some really strict rules. I had to be on strict bed rest. And they just said to make sure that if Danny touches me or touches anything I touch, that he washes his hands um, and stuff like that. So I kind of just stayed in my room for a week um, and tried to recover from it. And uh, I had gained about 30 pounds while I was in the ICU, even though I was pooping and throwing up every 30 minutes. I was, I lost or I gained like 30 pounds. Um, but I think it's because of all the fluids they gave me when I got home. And about the second day is when it started where my body just swelled up like a balloon. It was crazy. I wasn't eating anything or anything. Like this was all fluid retention and all stress retention or some, as some, something like that, that they told me that I put on 30 pounds in four days and I have an eating disorder. And so that was hard to hear, but obviously I just was grateful to be alive and that's what mattered to me. And I honestly actually didn't even care. When I got home and weighed myself, I was like, okay, I gained 30 pounds. Who cares? At least I'm alive. I cannot believe I even just survived that, you know? So I was very grateful. So continue to be on bed rest for a week. And then a week later, I had a heart attack. So that story is next. Um, yeah, but I just want to say thank you for all the kind messages of support and all the prayers and good vibes that were sent my way. Um, I did post about it on Instagram and everybody was so supportive and so sweet. And I was getting, I'm not getting hundreds of messages and it's been a long time since I've got hundreds of messages. I used to get that all the time, but recently, because I haven't been active doing much on the internet, um, nobody really messages me very much anymore. And so... Um, it was crazy. It was, it was, I just, I felt the love and I felt the prayers and I felt everything and I'm just so grateful. And, um, I've got a lot of fun, little fun things that happen, not fun, but like little sweet moments that happen in the ICU. Maybe I'll tell you those a different day. Cause this video is already really long. Um, there were like a lot of sweet moments that gave me the strength, I guess, to keep fighting because I'll say this both about this situation and the heart attack. I have been expecting something bad like that to happen to my body for a while now. Um, so is my doctor just because of all the damage I've done to my body over the years mixed with my other health issues and how weak that has made my different organs and stuff. So I honestly had convinced myself in my head and wish I wouldn't have done this, but at the same time, I can't blame myself for doing this. I convinced myself that I'm going to die of a heart attack if I don't end my own life, which I'm not going to do because we all know why. Um, and if you don't, maybe I'll talk about that later. But anyway, yeah. So, but, but this time, like, I can't even tell you the best. Okay. The best thing that came out of all of this is that I, it renewed my faith in God, first of all. Holy crap. Like the nurse told me that. Like she told me on the fourth day when things started clearing up, she was like, this is a miracle. This is a miracle that you're okay. And I, I just was like, I know it's because I was sent so much love and prayers and good vibes and whatever you guys sent my way. I felt it all and I appreciate it more than you know. And I had... I have the most incredible partner in the entire world who was there by my side as much as he could be and was and the most incredible parents that came and saw me and my my stepdad gave me a, a father's blessing and it was beautiful and they were able to give me the sacrament on Sunday the, there's this cute old couple that came in and they gave me and it, it so there were a lot of little things like that where I just um it did renew my faith and also, the other lesson I learned from all of this is that I am way stronger than I thought I was.
I think this was God's way of being like, see, you're stronger than you think you are. So, but also I had always thought to myself, something bad's gonna happen and I'll die. That's how I'll die. But both times I was begging God to let me live. And that was surprising to me. I was like, please don't let me die, God, please. Please don't let me die. Oh, I just was praying constantly in the ICU both times. And I'm grateful to be alive. It taught me a lot about myself and, you know, kind of forced me, I guess, to look at my life and a little bit deeper and kind of figure out how badly I want to keep fighting and what I need to do to do so. And there's been so much improvement mentally for me and so much improvement in other ways as well. And I'll talk about that in another video. Um, and I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful to be alive. So that's what happened, but you'll hear it the next, probably tomorrow or the next day. And then I will make another video letting you know like where I'm at as far as YouTube goes, as far as social media, as far as like my future here, whether or not I have one even, things like that. That'll be coming soon too. So stay tuned, but thank you again for all the love and support and all the things and all the beauty and love and awesomeness that all of you are. I'm so grateful to be alive and I'm so beyond grateful for my husband. This has brought us a million times closer than we already were and I'm just so in love with him. And I had a really special moment with him the other day where, you know what, I'll tell that in the next video because the next video will probably be, won't take as long to explain the heart attack. So I'm gonna put that in the next video because I do want to share it, it was really sweet. So for now, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you guys later. And thank you for watching and thank you again for all your love and support. All right, I'll see you soon. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you're worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching, bye. Why did I do that? Yo, okay. <laughs>